in my opinion, the Emberlit stove, as we're putting together here, is a tremendous piece of gear. I love this thing. Um, you've seen it in my kit before. You've seen me use it in other videos. It just comes in four pieces. One, two, three, four, five pieces. And they slip together. So it's very easy to put together. You just saw it uh, taken apart. And it goes as thin as something like that. So it can go in any backpack, um, any day kit. And it's primarily a twig stove. So you can burn twigs in it, you can burn wood in it. And I like to do that very much. Sometimes you just wanna get a fire going. You wanna get some lunch and you wanna move along. That's why I think that the perfect companion for the Emberlit stove here is the Trangia stove, the Trangia alcohol burner. Or as Alrika taught us, a Trangia alcohol burner. So setup for the Emberlit stove is as fast as that, guys. That's done. Uh, let's find a rock to keep it balanced here. Now when the Trangia goes in there, and I hope you can see it, it's kind of low. And with the stove or the pot being up here, I haven't tried it like that because I've always made some mods. I've always had some mods to raise up the Trangia stove a little bit. I was using wood for a while, but what happens with wood is when the wind's blowing through the holes down here, um, my wood was catching on fire. Regardless of how green or green-ish it was, the wood that was holding the stove would start to smoke and uh, catch a little fire which made a fire around the stove and I had my pot up here and it was very difficult to deal with and it wasn't necessarily a good thing. So Harbor Freight has these tent stakes, metal tent stakes. They're not light at all by the way. They are not ultra light. They're not even kind of light. But I was putting a couple of them in to raise up the Trangia stove a little bit and get it closer to the flame. Get the flame closer to the pot when the pot's on top. Well, the one level is good and it worked just fine. I thought that if I raised it up a little more, and as you can see, these go right through the holes. These air holes on the Emberlit stove are directly across from each other and those fit perfectly. So I thought maybe we'll raise it up one more. So I started to put a second set of these and I think these at Harbor Freight come in a pack of eight, if I'm not mistaken. I'm just going to find a rock and raise it a little bit more. A few rocks. They come in a pack of eight, so they're affordable. Um, as I said, I've never used them as um, tent stakes. I either make my own or I have plastic ones that are a lot more practical to carry. And now when the stove is in there, it's raised up that much more to get the flame a little closer to the pot. And then we just put our pot stand on there. Um, with the pot stand on, I'm going to be using my Stanley Adventure Cup. The pot stand doesn't give you as much access to the stove. So it's harder to throw on the simmer ring when you want the heat down a little bit. But we're just looking for a boil. We're going to make some ramen noodles. And let me fill this Trangia stove with some alcohol. I think it might already have some in there. Yep, a little bit. So while it's fun, I have a lot of fun collecting wood for this stove and burning it that way, and it's very efficient when you do it that way. I also really like to, especially when I'm hiking like today and have other things I want to do, and I'm not going to start a fire. It was windy. The wind is let down, but in anticipation of the wind, I had brought all my uh, alcohol burning equipment. So I figured let's just go ahead and use that. And I've showed you this before, guys, but this hobo tool from Ozark Trail is phenomenal. Yeah, 
And there we go. One of the perks of it is the knife actually strikes the ferro rod, which we just got the fire going with that. So now, I'm just gonna throw on the pot stand here. So the Emberlet stove makes a perfect little wind, wind, wind screen for the Trangia. And it's versatile because you could use the Emberlet stove on its own and be just fine. So let's get a couple cups of water in here. Okay guys, so we're starting to get some bubbling here. We're gonna go ahead and add our ramen noodles. Chicken flavor, by the way. So raising this heat, from what I've found, is very efficient. I mean, it was taking much longer when I wasn't using both sets of tent stakes there. But ever since I started doing that, I'd find a notice noticeably faster boil time. And this Stanley Adventure Cup or Cook Pod or whatever they call it is very quick. I like it a lot. Highly recommend it if you're looking for just a small cook kit, a little cook pot. I like to use the MSR stove a lot. But sometimes when I'm just making something a little quicker or need a little less water is when I'll use this thing. So once this gets to a boil and our noodles soften up, we'll take it off and let it steam for a little while. Okay guys, let's check it out here. I think in a minute here, we can just take it right off the fire and let it, let it steam by itself. It's going pretty good in there. Here is our simmer. And as you guys know, the Trangia, you can open or close it accordingly to get that simmer that you want, get the amount of flame, which works really well, especially my MSR pot, because I don't need these pot holders on the, on the uh, Emberlet stove. All I need is just to set it right on there. It fits right on there. Let's take this off. But here's where it gets tricky. When we have it in here, all I do is I just pop these off to give me access to the flame and then throw the simmer ring right on there. And these things are hot, so you gotta be careful when you take them off, they're very hot. And everything cools down to touch in no time. So there we go. That's how I do it. Um, with the pot, pot stand on there and the Stanley Adventure Cup, We'll do another video and I'll show you the MSR pot just goes right on there. I can take it off, put the simmer ring on and adjust the flame accordingly when I'm using that. A little more work with this, but no problem at all, guys.